In Acts 1711 we read, These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. So without further ado, let's look into God's Word, the Bible. Good morning. This is devotional number 407, and today's date is February 13th, 2018. We have been looking this week at Mark 8, 35-37. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospel's, the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Paul, under divine inspiration, describes what others said about his spiritual pilgrimage in Galatians 1.23. He which persecuted us in times past now preacheth the faith which once he destroyed. To help us better understand the phrase, whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it, we can turn to Philippians 3, 4 to 14. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I am more. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, in Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Ye doubtless, and I count all things but loss, for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So what can we say is truly profitable? The Bible explains in John 6:63, 6, it is the spirit that quickeneth or makes alive, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Even if one were to give up their possessions to feed the poor or give their body to be burned, and from time to time people do this, it would not truly profit them in any spiritual sense or bring salvation during the day of salvation. We read in 1 Corinthians 13, 3, And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity or love, it profiteth me nothing. We also learn that what is truly profitable or valuable is the Bible itself. 
because Romans 10, 17 affirms this principle during the time and season when it was still possible to seek ye the Lord, or seek ye Jehovah. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. However, even God's word can be unprofitable to those who do not hear it with ears of faith. As we see from the sad example in Hebrews 4.2 of the Israelites who escaped from Egypt but never made it to the promised land. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them in them that heard it. And we see this sadly repeated not only during the church age, but during the great tribulation. And now as we've entered into the day of judgment, we see this uh, happening as well. Ultimate satisfaction can only be achieved by one whose soul has been granted eternal life by the author and finisher of faith, the Lord Jesus Christ. Throughout the Bible, we learn that God himself is our ultimate satisfaction. Psalm 1611 declares, Thou will show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. And the right hand has to do with the Lord Jesus Christ. In Genesis 15, 1, God announced to Abram and later changed his name to Abraham. After these things, the word of Jehovah came unto Abraham in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Psalm 36, 8 gives the child of God this wonderful assurance. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house, and thou shalt make them drink of the river of thy pleasures. Psalm 42, 1 to 2 pictures those who hunger and thirst for God himself. As the hart or the deer panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? The true Christian longs for the day when he can inherit all things, according to Revelation 21, 6 through 7. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son.